I'm here tonight because there are some things that are very sort of black and white to me, and this is very clearly unjust. The reason I think that internationally so many people have protested is because it's very clearly unjust. And by that, um, I understand that you know countries can have whatever legislation that they want, uh, whether we believe it's fair or unfair, but we need to believe that it's proportional. And I do not believe, and I don't think internationally, we believe that this is proportional to the crime that was committed. Where do we go from here? First of all, I want to apologise on behalf of my colleagues for there not being, well, there being two of us in the room. <laughs> um, it's not because people don't care. It is the logistics that in 17 minutes, bells are going to go and we're all going to start running. We're actually meant to be in the chamber at 6.30 for that. We are hearing, but what I want to do is encourage you to use people power and rather than just hearing, make us act more. There's two ways that I would um, suggest that you do that. Um, first of all, I, I completely support the letter, but I think we're all realists and the likelihood of this government um, not making money by selling arms um, or trading is pretty slight. Um, however, things like um, the 38 degree type campaigns, they really, really do work and they really, really do make MPs listen. So I would actively encourage you to directly get in contact with your MP, go to the surgeries, explain, and what we then do is we then sort of send that up the chain and start saying, come on, you're going to have to do something about this. You know, and, and your pestering will make that happen. The other thing, and I find it quite odd, I've done quite a bit of work on um, countries in the Commonwealth, and I was shocked how many of the lovely honeymoon destinations actually still have the death penalty. Um, and so I don't go to those countries anymore. And I think if we start asking people, particularly young people, because to be honest, they are so driven, um, they will make a difference. Say to them, why are you? Are you going on holiday to this country? We don't want to do that. And I think our money, we have control over that, and we can make a difference about where it goes. So I think we ought to start doing things like that. Um, countries work on embarrassment. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be talked about, particularly if they are countries that um, might have other issues which are drawing consternation internationally. So I think what you're doing is, and, and I'm sure it can be cold and pretty frustrating and sometimes pretty lonely and you um, that that will work. You know, don't don't think it doesn't work. They they don't want attention drawn to this. What they want is for it to go away. And you doing what you do means that there's a spotlight there, means that people are talking about it. So keep doing it. Um, get us to come down as well. Um, and and that's the way that we're going to change this. I, I also think that, um, I, I mean, I do as much work as I can with young people, and, and I got involved with politics through things like Palestine. And, and so I do think the Twitter campaigns that you can do, the, the networks that you've got, having debates in your local communities, and then getting that into the local papers, writing to the Saudi embassy, all of these things, they will put pressure on. I was here to listen, so I feel a bit embarrassed <laughs> sort of doing an impromptu speech. Um, but all I can say is that we have to stick together, we will make a difference, and, and I can guarantee to you that most of the MPs in this building want to help as well. <coughs>